Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Firsties. As always, I always want to say thank you for anyone who's listening, watching, viewing, subscribing, doing all the things. If you've not done that, please show you make sure you follow Firsties. That's Firsties POD everywhere. That's social. That's on Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat. I, th- I heard we're on Pinterest now, um, literally everywhere. And then all the audio is on anywhere you listen to your podcast. So now that we got the boring part out of the way, now let's get into the guests. So I have Omar here, Omar here, excuse me. And I reached out to him on social media. Now your resume is actually insane. So before we get into any questions or anything like that, I just kind of like want to run through it if you don't mind. Right, yeah. So I saw this from one of your social media posts. At 16, you moved to the U.S. from Ethiopia. 17, you were elected official, and you said over 115,000 students in yep. Baltimore, which we'll get into that, in the Baltimore public schools. 18, you had a full ride to George Washington, which, congratulations. Thank you. My mom is like, wow, right now. <laughs> She's <laughs> like, sure look. You, yeah, exactly. Literally, I'm going to get a call later. Like, why didn't you? Um, 19, you met your mentor, and you got into real estate, and you started to build your portfolio. At 20, you bought a home. Yep. Um, also for your loved ones, which is a dream of mine, and you got into investment property. And then at 21, you started your own agency um, with real estate marketing. Like, are you done? Like, what is happening? We're that's amazing. Started. Yeah, thank that's you. amazing. You, Congratulations. I appreciate it. So, so um, let's go down the list. So when you came here, at, so a little bit about me. Yeah. I came here when I was like two, three years old, so okay. completely different yeah, yeah, yeah. experience. You. Can you tell me a little bit of... What was the decision to move to at 16, Can yeah. you, if you're comfortable sharing? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I grew up, so I have three older sisters. Okay. I'm the youngest and the only boy. Um, and all my siblings, it's kind of like in Ethiopia, when you grow up there, it's like if you're at like the high school level, like sophomore, junior year, you have to start planning for, okay, where am I going to college? Because like college in Ethiopia isn't like, I mean, Addis Ababa University is I think like the best one. But like, again, you're not really, it's not like, you want to go somewhere. So it's a, whether Got you're going you. to Canada, the U S yeah. wherever it is. So, um, around high school, around like sophomore, junior year, it kind of became a tradition. Started with my oldest sister where we would move to the U S to Baltimore to live with my aunt. Um, and they were going to high school here. So when it was time for me to move my sophomore year of, of high school, I was like, I'm not leaving cause my dad is here. I'm staying with my dad. Shout Big out dad to guy. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to homie. <laughs> shout out to pops. Yeah. Um, so I stayed there my junior year, my sophomore year, and then my junior year, my dad's like, all right, it's time to go. I'll go with you. So my dad and I ended up moving here um, around my junior year of, of, of high school. And I mean, completely different world. I've, I've visited before for summers and stuff, yeah. but living here is a completely different ballpark. So again, coming from Ethiopia to Baltimore and, and going to school there is completely different world I, I don't even know how to explain yeah, it yeah how was that transition like was it tough to kind of oh yeah it was, it was super tough yeah it was super tough I was uh I was super when I first got here again you don't know the culture you don't know anybody like so I literally went to school I had my head down unless like a teacher called on me I would not look up I was just like <gasps> I, not I for get me. that yeah. yeah yeah it was yeah. a lot you want just lot. like to not stand out yeah just because like it's like scary it's like who, it's, I don't know just like these four these white people yeah. it's like it's, a, it's scary it's, it's completely you're not familiar to it at no. all so i'd be terrified at that no. young age so then d- do you remember like um when you started to get into the american culture and like what was it the music the fashion the yeah. food like how to, or sports maybe sports so it was soccer for me so mm-hmm. my junior year of high school again i slowly started coming out of my shell i had a, a teacher miss lab it was like this avid class which was like a class that like you know was it wasn't like a class class it was more of like hey let's get you prep for college just teach you how to public it was like an overall class which i love i think every school should have it avid is amazing and miss lab and she's like hey omar you should join she's like what do you do i'm like oh i used to play soccer in ethiopia yada yada and she's like you should join the school soccer team in my head i'm like no nah, i'm not gonna do this but somehow she convinced me to i tried out again Coming from Ethiopia, we're pretty good at soccer, so it wasn't really that hard to... Us runners? Yeah. Like, they're, like, seeing me run, like, what is wrong with this guy? <laughs> like, Where is he going? I know, right? They're like, what the heck? Um, so it wasn't hard. I got on the team, um, and then that team is really kind of what got me out of my shell. I started, like, interacting with my friends, picking up friends over there. Um, again, I was good, so I got, like, a little bit of respect from the team, and, like, the players and the coaches. So that's when I really started coming out of my shell, getting a little bit more social, and then in school too, Miss Avid, Miss Miss Lab really pushed me in Avid. She was like, "Hey Omar, like, I see so much in you. Keep going." Like, I did good in school because 
we're, we're Habesha. Like, that's, that's all we know. That's all we're taught to <laughs> yeah. do. It's like, yeah, like, so you know, study, yada, yada. Yeah, so, yeah. especially come from an Ethiopian curriculum to here, it was like, it was a joke. Right. Oh, really? Yeah. Just what, less strict? Less like, strict, less stress. Tell like, me, because I don't know that. Oh, Ethiopia I'm is like, like up. Yeah. next level. Like, because pr- think about it, in Ethiopia, I think you're learning all sub, like physics, chemistry, bi- there's no like picking your classes, there's no, you're taking math, you're taking mm. physics, you're taking chemistry. So like you had to deal with so much and it was a lot harder. And again, we had exams like every week. It was like intense exams, no open note stuff. Like they're over here like giving me like handouts with notes. I was like, what is going on? <laughs> um, Are you testing me or not? <laughs> I know. I'm like, what is, like you want me to like just copy and paste all this? So, oh my god, yeah. that is hilarious. See, yeah. I did not know that. Interesting. Different okay. World. How, so you you went to school here your entire life? Yeah, I came here when I was like two, three. Yeah. 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 Alexandria area. Yeah, and then we I grew up here. Yeah, okay. with me and my siblings. Yeah. Uh, and how many siblings do you have? I have an older sister okay. and I have an older brother. I'm the baby. Oh, so you're the youngest too. Yeah. Okay. Shout out to the youngest. They are the best, in my opinion. We, we live, we live large. Don't chat to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love it. Um, okay, so then uh, you you also got a full ride to George Washington. So was yeah. was that academic? Was that sports? So it was it's so Habesha of you. Yeah, that I want so to. Habesha. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> but no, it, it I'm goes joking, it I'm goes joking. downwards when my Habesha is like you know I'm like oh this great school kid and then it's like no, <laughs> um, but yeah so I um, so when I was in high school I again was just doing good in school, doing what I can to my, the whole game plan was to do good in school, go to med school, be a doctor, take care yeah. of, the, you know, you know how yeah. it goes, the whole process. Yeah. So it's either doctor, lawyer, engineer, there's no in between. So guess what my sister and my brother is? Doctors and lawyers. NP and engineer. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So I'm the wild card. Yeah. <laughs> Same here. I'm literally, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. So. It's um, I, that was the game plan. I was like, I'm gonna yeah. go to med school. Um, GW had a seven year med school program. Okay. So I was like, all right, whatever it takes, I'm gonna go here. It's close to Maryland. I'm not going too far out. Um, and again, my junior, around my junior year of high school, when it was about to end, Miss Lab asked me to run for a position on like the Baltimore County Board of Education, where pretty much you were like advocating, um, for the students on the Board of Education. So it's like all the board members, and there's a student board member. So. You have to like actually be like an elected official, the gov- like Governor Hogan, sw- sw- Hogan swears you in, all that kind of good stuff. And I was like, I looked at her, I was like, are you crazy? I'm like, yeah, somebody else will do it. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> absolutely not. Like I literally, I literally looked at her, I was like, I love you, Miss Lab, absolutely not. I like, walked yeah. away. Um, but she somehow convinced me, and my principal came. She's like, hey, Omar, like you should do this because I, um, I used to advocate for ESOL students. So I was an ESOL kid when I came. Right, it's like English wasn't like whatever. So. Um, when I was in ESOL classes, I realized like we weren't like allowed to take the same classes that everyone else was. Mm-hmm. Like, what's going on? Because I had my sisters. I was lucky. So all three of my sisters, OK, th- these are the classes you need to take AP psych, AP this, do that. They had me set up. Right. Yeah. But all the other kids like they were like they didn't even know what AP classes were, GT classes. So I was like and then I asked someone, I was like, hey, like, why, why aren't we like, why aren't the ESOL kids taking any classes? And when I walked into my AP psych class, I was the only black kid there. So I was like, there's something off. And I didn't want to be in that class. I literally dropped it the day of, and the teacher wouldn't let me drop it. He's like, I think you can do it. If you don't like it in two weeks, I'll let you drop it. Like, he forced me to stay in that class, which I'm grateful for. But I was like, why is there nobody else in this class? And that's when I like, started speaking up a little bit, asked a bunch of questions. Some people didn't like that I asked questions. Whatever. Um, so, yeah, when I guess they saw that, and they saw my academics. Like, I think you'd be perfect to represent our high school, Pikesville High School. So mm. every school nominates one. So there was, like, I don't know, like 80 students, whatever, picked out, whatever. And wow. Yeah, it's like a whole phase. So there's like the application phase, there's like a second application, and then there's an interview. So I was like, you know what, just to make them happy, I'll put in the application. I didn't think anything of it. I was like, I'll just do it to make them happy. Yeah. Went through first application. I was like, all right, whatever. And then second application went through that. I was like, what the heck? All right, whatever. And then when I got to the interview stage, I was like, okay, like the shit's getting real. I'm I'm in it now. If I'm in it, I'm going to win this shit. So that's when, like, I took it to the next level. We ran a campaign. So we won that. So I think uh, it was, um, the GW is a very political school. Mm-hmm. So they love guys that are, like, involved in, like, politics, advocating, stuff like that. So um, they gave me a full ride pretty much based off of, like, my previous stuff, I guess. Wow. Yeah. What a story. Yeah. You have, like, nine lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa. I know, right? <laughs> God, I feel like I'm not doing enough. Okay. Get out of here. <laughs> 
Um, so, uh, okay, so then what was that like? What was that experience like going to GW? Uh, also, so, what'd you study? So I, I came in as pre med, studying biology. Keyword came in. Came in. <laughs> I feel like everyone comes in pre-med. Like every Avesh I know, every first gen I know comes in as pre-med engineer and then two semesters and you're like, hey, what are you studying? Like, uh, actually. Communications. Communications. Yeah. I went to marketing. Yeah. 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 And we're better for it. We're like, better yeah, for it. Absolutely. Like, I mean, yeah. It all worked out. It all works out. It so all yeah. worked out. But I came in, so I ended up studying. I mean, I, I haven't even fully graduated yet, okay. to be honest. So, But I came in, I switched to uh, international business and real estate. Okay. Yeah. Now, knowing what you know now, yeah. do you think, and this is, can be like a controversial question, yeah. do you think that college is necessary to be a full-rounded, successful adult? Absolutely not. Why is that? So it depends. I mean, if you're going to be a doctor, lawyer, obviously like, you need to go to school. You're a doctor, you're a lawyer, right. yada, yada. But Agreed. if you want to do any type of business, entrepreneurship, you will learn 10 times more. I learned more about life business, money, taxes, by spending nine months with my mentor than I did in any classroom ever. I was paying $80,000 a year for a GW college degree Talk business classes. Talk about it. So I, I genuinely think you learn a lot more from experiences and actually doing it than anything else. Mm -hmm. Again, some classrooms and some professors have actually have ran a business and are teaching you based off experience, but for the most part, they're just reading off of a book. They're regurgitating, yeah. So it's like... I was in a marketing class, and this man was talking to me about, like, postcards and stuff. I was like, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> we got podcasts now. Yeah. We got social media. Like, this is a whole different ballpark. So, I mean, if you're doing entrepreneurship business, I don't think you don't need a college degree. But obviously, there are certain jobs and professions that you absolutely need it. But you really don't. I even have a friend, completely different again. It's not an entrepreneurship. He went to the computer science world. Yeah. He took a bunch of classes on um, Udemy, I think is what it's called. Mm hmm has like a job that pays him $170,000 a year, didn't go to college. So you really don't Sanity. need now. Like the world is completely different. Like yeah. It's it's hard to say that. And a, a lot of the Habesha parents can see like, get this guy out of this I podcast. I know, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> My mom's um, calling me right now. Yeah. She's Episode's like, not even out yet. <laughs> yeah, she's like, what's going on? Uh, oh, your mom's actually calling you. No, <laughs> um, but no, she. you just don't need it. It's a different world. It's a different ballpark. Yeah. Like, you don't need it. Okay. Now you mentored, you mentioned, uh, you met your mentor around like 19 and that's when you got into real estate. Yeah. I'm really like my siblings, my older cousins who are also like my mentors. And yeah. then my mentors that I met out in the field literally changed my life, gave me an opportunity, gave me a positive word, 100%. resources, whatever the case is, or the literal best. Um, so can you tell me a little bit more about your relationship with your mentor? How did you meet him? How did you was it an easy transition or were you a stubborn person who yeah. didn't want to? Because yeah. as young people, sometimes we don't want to hear ish from the older people, yeah. which is our mistake. But I want to get your feedback on that. So my mentor, I mean, I owe everything to my mentor. And I think having a mentor in any industry, even if you want to be a doctor, engineer, lawyer, salon owner, whatever it is, you should find someone that's doing what you want to do mm -hmm. and learn from them. That's going to be the fastest way you fast track your success. So the way I met my mentor I was in my college dorm room, this was during COVID, and I was in my biochem class, and I was like, I do not want to do this <laughs> shit. <laughs> I was like, this is not it. I was like, there has to be something else. And I was just on TikTok, like everyone is, and I'm scrolling through TikTok, and I see some real estate guy, you know all these influencers, right? I see this real estate guy, like, breaking down how much he made on a real estate deal. It was like $22,000, something like that, off of one deal. Like, he sold, so I was like, this is some bullshit. I scrolled past, and I was like, no. And I just scrolled. I don't know what it was. Something in me just made me scroll back. Yeah. I stalked his page for a little bit. And I honestly had no idea what it meant. I didn't know what real estate was. I didn't know it was a business. I, I, mean, I come from Ethiopia, doctor, lawyer, engineer, right? So I had no Anything clue. else, huh? Anything else. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I, uh, it intrigued enough in me to where I just, like, Googled real estate. I had no idea what I was Googling, but I was just like, real estate near me. I had no clue what it meant. And um, the first thing that popped up was the number one brokerage in D.C., which was called the One Street Company. And I was like, okay, let me look into this. I clicked it, went through their website. I was like, okay, they sell houses is what it's – I still didn't fully understand what was going on, but I was like, okay, they're a brokerage. They sell houses. I didn't know what brokerage meant at the time. I stocked the page. I found out who the founder and CEO was. His name was Samer Qureshi. He was my mentor. And I just stalked his personal social media. 
I looked at his Instagram, all that good stuff, and I sent him a cold email. I sent him a cold email. I was like, hey, my name's Omar. I'm a freshman at George Washington University. I'm studying biology. I know nothing about real estate, but I would love the chance to come and work for you for free. I'll grab you coffee. I'll do your paperwork. Like, I don't care. I'll do whatever it takes. And I saw his social media. I think social media comes natural to us as, like, younger people. So I was like, would love to help you grow your social media presence as well, yada, yada. And surprisingly enough, this guy who's, like, a multi-million dollar CEO, his office is right in front of the White House. It's, like, one of the nicest offices I've ever been to. Um, one of the biggest developers in D.C. replies back to me in an hour. He goes, no one's ever emailed me like this before. Come on down. Let's talk. I was like, what the fudge? So the very next day, this is where the parents are going to hate me even more. I didn't go to a single class the next day. I went straight to his office. <laughs> you packed your things up like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, <laughs> I'm out. I'm gone. It was only 0.5 miles away from GW. I got yeah. one of the scooters right over to his office and I showed up to his office at 9 a.m. and he didn't show up till like 11. So I walk in, get my, so to give you like the full picture, Please. this is me like walking in, skinny as shit, I mean skinnier than I am now, you know how Vesha is, it's how we are. I had an afro that was like this big. Okay. I put on a suit that just didn't even fit me, I just like got a suit from like Nordstrom, like put on a suit and it's just like this little ass kid walking to this huge office with all these like big brokers or whatever. And the sister literally looks like at movies. me. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, she literally looks at me and she goes, can I help you? <laughs> I was like, oh, God. Bathroom's this way. Yeah, yeah, no, literally. She's like, you're in the wrong. But she's like, I'm like, no, I'm here to see Sam McCreed. And Sam, man, Sam is a CEO, right? So she's like, are you sure that's who you want yeah. to see? I was like, yeah, yeah, Sam McCreed. She, she didn't believe me. I showed her the email. She goes, okay, he's not in yet. I don't know when he's going to come, but feel free to just sit down and wait for him. I was like, okay. I waited for this man for like three hours. Like she kept asking, are you sure you want to wait? He ended up showing up at 11 a.m. And I, w I stood up, I introduced myself and he was like, who are you? I was like, oh, I'm the kid that emailed you, whatever, whatever. He's like, look, man, I didn't think you were actually going to come. I have nothing planned for you, but feel free to just hang out with me all day. So for him, he thought he was like, oh, like, I feel bad. I don't have anything planned for this kid. But for me, I was like, absolutely. I'm going to hang out with this multi-million dollar CEO all day. So that day was the day that changed my life. I just mm -hmm. spent all day with him watching this man get literally a thousand emails, a thousand calls, a million, like just insane amount of people walk in his office asking questions. And this guy was responding to every single person. Like literally he got an email two minutes later, he's responding. You can ask your, and this is something I caught on from him. Like I, you ask your secretary who like emailed me about the podcast. I think like maybe like a minute later I responded back. to was like, Hey, thanks. Confirmed. She like, did tell me that. Yeah. I was like, Whoa, yeah, that's one thing. Like I am right now, obviously we're on a podcast, but my phones are attached to my hip. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. So he had, like, crazy customer service. He was insane. And um, he was, like, you know, we went to his development sites. We went to some showings with him, like, showed some houses. It was my first time in a G-Wagon. This guy was driving me a G-Wagon. And, like, again, I still didn't fully understand what he was doing. But mm -hmm. I was, like, whatever this guy is doing, this is it. Like, this is what I want to do. Yeah. And we had a great day. And at the end of the day, he was, like, look, Omar, like, you have to hustle. You have to drive. I didn't think you actually show up. Feel free to come by any time gave me like an open invite and I took that shit literally yeah I showed up every day didn't go to a single class and that was George Washington University was that was that George Washington <laughs> University that his was literally office. George Washington University his office I'm like yeah how school school is great guys. no <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it yeah so it worked out so that's why we're like yay yeah. but oh yeah if it like didn't work out it would have been <laughs> I would have been but it, it, it had to work out yeah. with the way that yeah that's yeah. an amazing story there's so many like um little nuggets that you just left there yeah. as far as like what the younger generation or our little cousins who's ever watching yeah. can get that like people don't do that anymore they like wait for the employer to call them back once no. they put in their resume to see and they're not as like forceful as like our older generation yep. was where like you saw an opportunity or you actually create opportunity for yep. yourself is what you literally did 100%. and didn't take no for an answer no for an answer yeah that's, that's literally like and again now I, I obviously like i'm like paying it for it but like i've, ha I've had the guys like reach out to me hey more like would love to learn about real estate, whatever it is. And, like, I might not respond back right away or whatever it is. But, like, these kids that are just persistent. I have this kid. His name's Abraham. He just moved from Ethiopia. He goes to Towson University. He's interning for me now. He's yeah. interning. He's been with us for, like, six months now. He just closed his first deal. Got a check for $3,000. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, just persistence is all it takes. So, like, 100%. Like, the older generation, that's the one thing I give it to them. Like, they're, like, go-getters. And yeah. we definitely have to step up and, and kind of be like that.
Yeah, I mean, I definitely think the younger generation, this could be a hot take, is the we have trouble with, like, ego, where, like, you accepted an opportunity to damn near clean his bathrooms if he, he yeah. made you, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And some people are like, I would, I have a college degree, I would never. Yep. It's like, everyone has to start somewhere. I told you off yep. camera what my mom did when yep. she started, she worked at, like, 7-Eleven, grave shirt, graveyard hours, and, like, dangerous neighborhoods and all the, the things. Yep. And now she's where she is now and living comfortably. But you have to start somewhere 100%, yeah 100 i mean and honestly like again i think that's why as first gens we have that work ethic or we should have that work ethic because yeah. like we see what if our parents went through like you know what i mean so it's like you got like i mean I, you, what are you gonna do like sit around at home and like wait for something to happen like insanity it's, it's crazy to me. yeah it's crazy to me. yeah so your work ethic wow congrats on that that's yes. an amazing story i hope that inspires anyone who's listening yeah, yeah. or watching um that this is what it looked like years before oh. that you put in. I mean, again, people see now, they see the Instagram now, like, oh, yeah. closings, this, nice cars, Very nice watches. Yeah. But, like, literally, not even four, three and a half years ago, completely different world. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, door dashing at 11 p. Like, I, so I used to leave my internship, right? It was unpaid and never got paid. He even offered to pay. I was like, no, this is not what I'm here for. I'm here to learn. And that's the thing. It's like, I feel like, the, again, it's controversial. So people are going to take it the wrong way. But I feel like if you take a check, you kind of lose the path of, like, what you're doing it for. Like, I was just there to learn. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't want to get paid. So I literally used to DoorDash every – so I used to leave his office at, like, 8 p.m. He was always the last person to leave. This guy, his work ethic's insane. Last person to leave, this guy's the CEO of the company. He used to turn off all the lights in the building. Like, it's crazy. And I used to leave at 8 p.m. I used to go home, get changed, and then – past like around like 10 p.m it's plus two dollars on doordash so i used to oh. bank i'm like oh this is perfect timing anyway so literally at 10 p.m i used to hop my sister's toyota corolla doordash all night in dc i used to do drop offs of mclean they tipped really well and i used to get home at like i don't know 12 1 a.m back to my dorm room knockout same thing every day so like Dang. the transition and again in high school too like i worked three jobs i used to be a buster at la food marquette i was a mexican restaurant I worked as a dental assistant for McDonough Dental, and I used to DoorDash still too. Like, and I used to do it under my sister's account because it wasn't like, legally paying them like DoorDash. You know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was nuts. <laughs> it was. It was. Nuts. I love that. Yeah, that's an amazing story. Wow, I have a million questions, but yeah. we're gonna take a quick break, guys, and we'll be back after these short messages. <laughs> awesome. Sorry guys. All right, guys, we are back. Um, so we were talking about your worth ethic mm -hmm. a second ago, right? Yeah. And I have to say, by the way, when I um, reset the cameras, guys, literally he grabbed his phone and was ready to mess around to more people. Like he's not even joking. <laughs> I'm like, shit. <laughs> which I love, which I love. Um, so you're talking about like that worth ethic. So if you feel comfortable, like I know where my worth ethic came from. I, th yeah. I always say that the two things, the best things my parents gave me are two things. They believed in me and then they showed me how to work. Those yep. are the two things they told me, like reach for the stars. Um, what was what was your experience with your parents um, that inspired you? Because the you want to know the reason why I brought you on the podcast? Yeah. There's one particular video on your social media. Which one? It was the one where you were in Addis. Uh, and you go down the list and you're yeah, like, yeah. I came from here. And it, it, you it basically said, doesn't matter where you came from. It's all about your commitment and dedication. And I was 100%. like, yeah, he's definitely a first C let's have him on. Yeah. Um, and I feel like I can learn from you and our audience can learn from you as well. Yeah. So what, what was your, um, perspective when it came to like your parents and yeah. their worth ethic? So, I mean, my parents did everything for us like literally everything i mean they're the ones that brought us here and it's four of you guys you said four, or of, us. four of us yep. okay. three sisters and, and then me and um yeah i mean start off with my mom my mom is a boss my mom is a i boss. love this yeah, yeah, yeah so she owns a family business in ethiopia it's like a bit like a huge cement factory over there so like her and my uncle especially and my uncles too my uncles were huge influence on me especially one of my uncles in particular and um they were like hustlers man they would just every time like just hustling hustling yeah coming to the office seeing my mom there like it instilled like an entrepreneurship like spirit in me but even then even while they were entrepreneurs they would be like oh you have to be a doctor oh you have to be a lawyer <laughs> you know what i mean 
So I never even thought about getting into business, but I, I remember this so vividly on my drive to the airport when I was about to move to the U S my uncle drove me and he was like my uncle. That's like kind of like the head of the family. Yeah. And he looked at me, he's like, so what's the plan? And I was like, oh, you know, whatever, doctor, or whatever. He's like, look, like, your sisters can be doctors. Like, your, 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 your uncle, your cousins are doctors. Like, everyone's a doctor. Like, that's what everyone wants to do, engineer. He's like, look into business. He's like, I think you'd be a great business person. And I was like, yeah, whatever. You know what I mean? It's because, like, it was, just, I was like, no, I don't want to do business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, definitely my mom, my uncles, and then my dad, too. My dad is insane work ethic. So my dad is a doctor. He also worked for the U.N., and he was a hustle. Like, I mean, this guy used to be up late as shit, just, like, working all the time. And, again, at the time, you don't really think anything of it. But now, looking back, I'm like, yeah, like, that's where I'm like, hey, if the project's not done, the project's not done. Like, mm. you're going to stay up and get it done. Um, so that, And then also the fact that, like, you know, he left all that. We had such a good life in Ethiopia. And moving here to, you Talk know. Talk about it. You know? Yeah. So that's tough. That's really tough. So my whole goal was, like, whatever it takes, I got to bring the lifestyle that we had back to what it was in Ethiopia. You know what I mean? Because you come to, to Baltimore, Ethiopian money isn't U.S. money. You know what I mean? It's, mm -hmm. it's a different world, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah, definitely my parents are definitely where I get my work ethic from, 100%. And uh, you mentioned your siblings. Are they here? Yeah. And what do they do? So my oldest sister, again, it's so funny, but we were all pre-med. None of us <laughs> ended up being doctors. <laughs> <laughs> all pre-med shout us. out to pre-med shout out to pre-med uh <laughs> my oldest sister is um she works in computer science she works she's like head of some department at amazon for computer science so okay she does super well my second sister um is a data data scientist which i honestly have no clue what she does love but the honesty it's cool it yeah. sounds cool she works at a big firm um and then my third sister also works in computer science as well so they all went like the techie world Okay, yeah. gotcha. So again, you're the wild card yeah, in the well, family. Yeah, yeah. Still don't sound okay. I think your parents are very proud of you. <laughs> are they here or are they home? So my dad is here. My mom's home. Okay, gotcha. She's yeah. there full time. She's there full time. She comes here and there. She'll probably come in like May or something like that. But for the most part, she's over there. Okay, yeah. It's yeah. crazy how we just have very similar... Is it your parents, parents also in Ethiopia, like one there, one they, here? They, they travel there and there. Now they're basically in like retirement, so yeah. it's like six months there, six months here. Tell, um, tell them why they're basically in retirement. Tell them what mom did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she did good for herself when it comes to property and stuff. Yeah. Basically what you're doing, yeah. Um, and on that topic, actually, yeah. she's been, I, I think I like sneezed and said like, hey, I think I want to get into property management soon. A million emails. Yeah. A million texts. Yeah. Reach out to my guy. Reach out to my business manager. Yep. Reach. What are your finances? Let yep. me see this. Let me see this. I'm like, okay, just give me a second. Relax. And I, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. and I travel a lot for my actual day job, okay. which I'll tell you off camera. But yeah. I travel a lot for work, so sometimes like, I might not be as responsive because I'm flying or doing 100%. a bunch. I'm in meetings all day, every day. Yeah. So, um, for anyone who's watching, okay, to me, yeah, right? Yeah. I'm yeah. 27, about to be 28. Wow. And I'm renting right now, so I'm throwing my money away. Yep. Is what everyone's Pretty telling much. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. <laughs> Just to be honest. It's okay. And for anyone who also is watching, where a lot of us, because we're first gens, we, which is why I want to start this podcast, like for you had mentors and stuff, but you're the first thing in your family to kind of do this over here. Yeah. It's very remarkable, right? Like Thank you didn't really have a blueprint. You just had to figure it out. Yeah. Also, you, a lot of the rooms that you're in, I'm sure you're the, you're the only brown or black person in the room. Yeah. yeah. And that can be intimidating and stuff. So um, for anyone who's listening, including myself, yeah. um, where do you start when it comes, because being a homeowner, like it seems like such a big task and everyone yeah. says, or the people who are actually skilled yep. say, it's actually not that deep. It's, it's actually not, not that. It, it's and I think it's honestly set up that way to where it should feel so scary and mm -hmm. stay away from it and whatever it's like you have to be this multi-millionaire to buy a house and you 20 percent down it's it's so easy to buy a house really it's so easy to buy okay a house. I'm feeling a little bit better I, you know what I think it is it's similar to like when I came to this country with my yeah. siblings and my parents yeah my parents goal was to buy a home yep our goal was always education 100%. like percent for all of our, that was built in, yep. built into my brain, right? Yep. So then when it, it obviously eventually happened, but um, took some time, we came here, and we were renting for a long time, then yep. apartment to apartment, and yep. times were tough sometimes, and then we eventually were able to get our first home, and my mom's business, like I always talk about part of the reason why um, I didn't see my mom for for a good amount of time, or she wasn't able to go to every yeah. soccer game, whatever the case yeah. is, is because She's Everything hustling. went to the business, yep. right? And I understood that. I don't yep. know why at a young age I understood that. And it yep. wasn't like a heartbreaking thing. I was like, this is what we got to do. Yeah. 
yet I'm fed. I get to do all my fun things. Yeah. I never it's was all like, for you. Yeah, you it, it literally is all for me. Yeah. yeah, which can be like a lot sometimes. I hate get emotional <laughs> even talking about it. I'm like, yeah. man, our parents love us so much. Yeah. Um, but it's when I saw how how I wouldn't say how long, but just like when we bought a house, it was like a big thing. It was yeah. like a celebration, our first yeah. home. It's huge. Yeah, and so yeah. that's why I think I thought my little piece sized brain that like, oh, this is like a big yep. deal to do that but you're 100%. saying it's it's not it's i mean again it is i feel like it's sense like it is a huge deal to buy a house you know what i mean but at the, as the process isn't as hard as people think like i've had clients that bought a house with zero out of pocket you can buy a house as little as three percent down people don't know that they think they need 20 percent. like if you wanted to buy like a five hundred thousand dollar house right now which is like the average sales price in this area five hundred thousand dollars times three percent you need fifteen thousand dollars and okay. I can promise you I can get you so many grants, so many uh, options to where you can even get around that and bring that lower to where, like, you're not bring, you don't need too much out of pocket. Like, you don't need a lot. As long as you have a good job yeah, and a good credit score, you're set. Like, people don't understand how important credit is. I would rather have an 800, an 800 or 700 credit score over $100,000. Mm. That's how important credit is. Like, you, if you have good credit, you can... Because, again, it's all about leveraging other people's money, the banks. Like financing is the key. Like it's the hack. Like, whatever it is. Even, like, when it comes to, like, buying cards or whatever it is. Like, again, my mentor taught me, like, so many tricks and, you know, the way I had to loop around taxes and finance it and do this. And it's just there's so many loopholes. It's just, like, we're just not taught this stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's, like, why aren't we taught this stuff? And that's something I actually, you know, regret or wish I knew more about when I was on the board because like I was like this is stuff we need to learn because like you come out of high school and they just get you ready for college like you have to go to college like I feel like you should come out of high school and be like life ready you should know how to rent an apartment how to write a check what credit is like getting a loan oh like God. they get yes. you in a loan at 18 for college for like I have a friend right now this is just undergrad yeah just undergrad he's $265,000 in debt and he's a political science major. Huh? That's the math is not mathing. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like it's hard. Like two hundred sixty thousand. Yeah. You're yeah. gonna get a job for fifty, sixty k a year, seventy k a year. It's gonna take like they just it's bad. It, it, we just need to learn. They need to high schools. I think it's where it starts. Where they need to teach us a lot more about finances before we you know get out into the real world. But you mentioned it's programmed that way for a reason. Yep. Especially for people like that look like us. So. Yep. Um, okay, let me ask you this. Does it, if someone has debt, mm -hmm. let's say student loans, yeah. and then they want to buy a home, yeah. should they focus on taking care of a little bit more of that debt, or does that not really matter? What are your thoughts on that? So, I mean, it really depends on the person, but I would say, so your debt does matter. So there's like what we call like your debt to income ratio. Yeah. So like if you have like $1,000 in debt and, you know, you're, you're bringing in, I don't know, $4,000 a month, whatever, it really lowers your purchase power. So like, about like, let's say a $700 payment or like, you know, whether it's student loans, car payment, whatever it is, okay. any type of loan will relate to about like almost $100,000 in purchase price, which is huge, right? So it's like the more your debt, your monthly debt is, your debt to income, um, it should, typically it's like you around like 45%. It's like the number that they want to look at, but it does affect it. I would honestly say like I'm a huge, huge believer in like trying to pay off your debt as much as possible. Um, I wouldn't say wait till you're fully paid off before you buy your property because it's going to take so much longer than what it should. Like even like the concept of saving 20% down, look, yeah, if you save 20% down, you get to avoid something called like private mortgage insurance, which is only like 15, like it's only like $7,500 a month. Like it's not worth saving up to 20% to okay. like buy a house. And then two, obviously your monthly payment will be a little bit lower, but like the time it takes you to save 20%, Think about it. We just did an example of like the five hundred thousand dollar house. Yeah. To save twenty percent for a five hundred thousand dollar house is going to be a hundred thousand dollars. Who the hell has a hundred thousand dollars? Who's going to save a hundred thousand dollars? Right. So like, I would I would honestly get into uh. the low down payment three percent five. Per, I put five percent when I bought my house. When I bought investment property, yeah, maybe I put a, I think I put like fifteen percent down because like when it's an investment, they make you put more down. But there's ways around. Like you can live in it for one year. Rent it out, buy it again as your prime. There's there's so many loopholes, but I forget what the question was. But yeah, no, this is, 
I hope everyone is. I'm probably gonna watch this episode back while I'm <laughs> editing it <Yeah. laughs> to 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 jot down some notes. Yeah, because I think the thing is, is like I love my mom, but she's very much that Havasha mom when it comes to like, why don't you get it? Yeah. Like, just do it. What? Just do like this yeah, is what yeah. I did. Just do it. Yeah. You have two degrees. I have no American degrees. Why did I figure out you have? And I'm like, all yeah. right, thank you. You're like, okay, mom. Like, just pass potatoes. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about something else. Dinner is like always a fun yeah. conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How um, does does she do? You, like see her how often do you see the fam yeah so they're 20 minutes down the road uh-huh. always sunday dinners and stuff i talk uh-huh. to my mom literally every single day Amazing. yeah 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 she's the greatest Homie. person yeah, yeah. on the living earth I love absolutely it. I yeah love yeah it. she's the best um okay now one thing i saw in your bio was yeah. the 40 under 40 yeah which is really exciting congratulations yeah. i know Thank i'm late you. to the party but Thank congratulations you. yeah can you tell me what because i also have um, like for example, my producer Miriam, yeah. she's interested in getting into real estate. Okay. When she heard that you agreed to come on this show, yeah. she knows who you are. No way. And she's so excited. That's to, amazing. To know you. I yeah. wish she was here. Yeah, I know, so, yeah. I know, I know. She was supposed to, she was supposed to be here, and then something came up. It's okay. Um, you guys will connect later. So yeah. for someone like her, um, now that we talked about being a homeowner, but someone who actually wants to get in the business of helping other people buy homes, hundred percent. Because I've seen the videos and the social media of. This, this, the happy faces and people who were really excited that you were in this journey with them yeah. to buy their first home, which is like a really big deal. Yeah. Um, what does that entail? I know you talk about your mentor and things, yeah. but um, I want to kind of, for you to talk a little bit more yeah, about that. So I'm biased, obviously, but I think sales is the best industry to get into, especially as a young person. Because mm-hmm. one, you have no cap. You can make as much as you want. It's all about how hard you work, right? There's commission-based jobs, in my opinion, are the best thing young people should do because it's, it's completely up to you it's in your control you sell more you make more you don't want to s- so obviously there's a risk of if i don't sell anything this month i don't make any money right right so there obviously is that but once you get good at it i think sales is the best industry in the world and especially real estate so i always tell everyone like i would obviously say real estate sales because that's what i do and i recommend you guys do it because i think it's again the best business but yeah. sales anything you can sell obviously the higher the price point the more money you'll make so yeah what's more expensive than a $500 million house, right? So uh, getting into it, if you want to be a real estate agent, if you want to get into real estate sales, it's actually a joke. It's so easy to get into it. Mm. So easy. The barrier to entry is like this low. (laughs) No, like literally this low. Got it, okay. So all you need is a $300 real estate license, and it's an online class. So you can take it at 1 p.m., 1 a.m., whenever you want. It's a 300, you don't need a college degree. You just need either a high school diploma or a GED that's the only requirement and you have to be over the age of 18 years old that's it mm. so you take the class it's completely online it's completely self-paced you can take it on ceshop.com and once you take that and you pass that then you have to take the state and national exam so like let's say I'm doing my Virginia license I gotta take my Virginia state exam and there's one big national exam it's like a total of like 120 questions for the whole exam you can take it as many times as you want I think I failed on my first time I just took it again it's like 60 bucks every time you want to retake it but once you take that exam and you pass, that is it. You are now officially a licensed real estate professional, which, again, it doesn't mean you're going to go out and sell a ton of real estate. It doesn't mean you're going to be good at what you do. There's a, there's, that's why there's so many realtors. I don't know if you've noticed, but, like, everyone and their mother is a realtor. You know what I mean? But, like, <laughs> only, like, 10, so 10% of the industry does 90% of the business. So you're either really good and you're killing it or you're just mm. someone with a real estate license, which, like I said, the barrier to entry is so low anybody can get in the club anybody can get in the club <laughs> literally anybody can get in the club so uh yeah getting into it is super easy but then obviously what i would recommend is once you have that license or even before you get the license do what i did whether you're finding a mentor personally or even at least joining a brokerage that gives you a ton of training because they don't actually teach you how to sell they don't teach you how to negotiate they don't teach you how to write contracts like the course is it's a college it's like you don't really teach you much you know what i mean <laughs> it's just it's it just that sounds that's so, so real no that's so real <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't it doesn't teach you much so you have to actually get the real life experience yeah. um so i would definitely find a broker or a mentor someone that's doing it that you can learn from shadow and then really just learn how to sell because once you're good at selling it's like unlimited you know what i mean you can do whatever you want because you're selling all the time you're selling me to get on this podcast you're selling yourself to your audience you're selling yourself to your mom as to why you want to do xyz right. like we're always selling regardless right. but yeah sales sales is literally the best industry in the world Okay, so you mentioned how sales is kind of in any, every portion of our lives. Yep. Do you think that, because um, I don't work in sales, but I work adjacent toward my sales team, okay. and I could kind of see, like, 
if someone's new on the team, like if they'll make it or not, whether it's their worth ethic, yeah, whether they don't know how to put their emotions aside. Um, and then also if they have it, that it factor as oh. far as being personal. Do you think that can be taught and you can learn that through your mentorship or it's either like you either got it or you don't? So I think it can be taught. Okay. I, I, I literally was not this person three years ago. You really? know what I mean? No, not at all. Like, may, okay, maybe like four or five years ago. But like still, like I, I definitely think it can be taught. Um, it's, I mean, there are some people that just have it. Like they're just like, wow, like that guy is just like super charismatic. Like he just. I would say about you. Yeah. But like it's, I think it was taught. Like I think it was like over time it gets better. You mm-hmm. get more comfortable. Confident. Confident. Yeah. Um, so I definitely think it can be taught. Some people just do have it. And I meet people. I'm like, oh yeah, she's gonna, she, she, she has that factor. Like he has that. But I definitely think it can be taught. And that's, that's one thing people always go, oh yeah, I'm not really like a social person. Like for me, an ideal night is I'm chilling at home. I got my food ordered, my Uber Eats, and I'm watching TV. <laughs> I am actually, like, actually, like, internally, I'm an introvert. Like, I'd rather just Same. relax. Yeah. I'm on this couch. But TV you wouldn't tell. Right like, there. I would be like, oh, she's super social. She probably, like, wants to go out and hang out. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we but, seen. But you probably also, same like me, I recharge alone. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. So once this is done, I'm editing and I'm yep. eating some food and just like leaving yep. it for a second. Quiet, and I have like, to prepare for like being yeah. social. And yeah. I overcompensate by being like, 100%. yeah, same way. Same 100%. Because yeah, yeah. my entire job is literally building relationships. Like My entire job as a salesperson is making you like and trust me. That's it. Like I, I have to sit here, look you straight in your eyes and be like, okay, like I need to make her like me. Because then now you're going to trust me and you're going to want to yeah. buy real estate for me and then rent for me. And yeah. then it's a whole process. So I feel like you're always selling. I don't think there's any other industry where you can be that young, so little requirements, no cap on what you can make, 200, 300, 400, 500, okay, million. Like there's literally no cap. So yeah, sales. You should you should have everyone look into that. <laughs> don't be a doctor again, sales. My mom is like clicking off right I now. I know. <laughs> every, every parent's like, get this guy off this podcast right now. But honestly, my target audience, love them to death, it's not the old generation. Yeah. It's that firsties. It's my cousin yeah, watching right exactly. now, and which is which is why I'm loving this episode. 100%. Um, all right, guys, we're almost wrapping up this episode. We're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be back after these short messages. Fire. All right, guys, we are back. Um, so loving this um, this episode. Okay, um, so you, what I also wanted to talk about was, yeah. um, so clearly you work very hard and your worth ethic is there. We talked about that in this episode, yeah. right? Now, have you fallen? No, that's probably not a good, great way to ask that question. No, let's hear it. Have you, do you have a personal life? Because that also comes with it, right? Yeah. That yeah. that I'll, I'll say this, like I grew up learning there's nothing wrong with this because again, everything worked out for how yep. it's supposed to. And I'm a faith-based person as well. So yep. like all glory be to God. But yep. um, there was there was very little time for self-care, yeah. right? My parents, by the end of the night, they were done, yeah. right? Yeah. Which I almost agree with. That's how I was taught when yep. I was in my volleyball matches or when I was you know, studying for school or whatever the case is, um, there was always enough time or more, you, you always put in more than anyone else, all, all those things. Um, but it also taught me to like, I burn out very frequently. Yep. I don't really have a personal life. I don't yep. really prioritize that. 100%. And I don't know, one day I probably want to meet someone and have a family of my yeah. own. Yeah. And like every day we're getting older. So that's the reality of yeah. it. So do you, do you prioritize a personal life? Like, do you see your family? Do you, do you have a loved one? Like yeah. all the things. Um, so I try to, but no, like it, it's, it's very tough. Like yeah. I, um, again, I 90% of the time I'm not home until like 9, 10 PM. Right. Okay. So it's, and what time do you leave or what time do you start your day? I'm up at six every day. Okay. And I'm probably you know at the office again, every day is so different for me, but like I'm, I'm running around starting 7 AM minimum. So okay. I'm at the gym. 6 a.m. So I wake up even at like 5, 35, whatever. If it's if I'm being lazy, like 6, 30-ish, whatever. I'm at the gym and then straight to the work, like all day, right? So it's like my phone, if it's past 9 a.m., will not stop blowing up. So like I'm just dealing with so many people, so many clients, so many personalities, yada, yada. So for me, it's like I am willing to sacrifice a lot right now okay. in order for, like you said, when I do find someone 
I don't have anyone, by the way. Um, when I do find someone or whatever yeah. it is, I can set them up. Like, I, we're going to be chilling. You know what I mean? Like, my whole goal is just work insanely hard hours right now, set everything up the way I wanted to. And my goal is, like, in the next five years, I don't want to work. Mm. I want to be done, call it a day. I want to do, like, fun stuff that I enjoy. Like I'm, uh, I also do podcasts. So I want my entire job to be just podcasting going around me come on right? you know, how fun is this right imagine just we're to getting, travel just a kiki with people exactly, <laughs> exactly. like this is this, this is, is so it's much build fun. relationships yeah. like super fun so, and help people and, serve and help others. people yeah. literally like they're gonna get so much value from stuff like this right so yeah no i uh, it's very tough like my sisters yell at me all the time like you know we never see you my parent my dad was like yeah when are you coming home like this is so funny this is a conversation i had with my sister literally yesterday um i'll read it to you <laughs> She goes, she literally texted me last night at 7 p.m. She goes, Anta Tota. I said, <laughs> Yep. Why don't you answer my FaceTimes? And she goes, Oh my God, he responded. I said, You go to Egypt without telling me. When'd you call? She goes, Yep. I called you the day I landed. I said, Sure. And then she goes, um, You miss me. I said, Yep. She goes, Ah, oh, when are you back? She goes, Coming back on the 7th, whatever. She goes, How's work? I said, Busy, but okay. She goes, is she? I'll face him and the kids are awake. I said, ciao, bye, heart me back, thumbs up. Like, <laughs> that's just like, they like they always like are like, yo, like, but they they understand. I think they know what I'm doing it yeah. for. Um, so no, it's it's very tough. I mean, again, same thing too. Like when you have social, if you try to have someone, it's very tough. Like I, I, I that's the reason why I don't talk to anybody or really go with that deep into because like they deserve the time, the energy. I'm like, I just don't have that. Yeah. Like, there's just no way. Yeah, and, and that's not to, I only bring that up to share with people that like, I want to paint a full picture yeah. and that with anything there comes sacrifice. 100%. Like if you prioritize a relationship, you, you might not be able to get yep. to your goals as fast. You'll still be able to get to your goals. Yeah. But I do really believe we could have it all, just maybe not at the same time. Yeah, I, I genuinely think you can have it all. It's just, it's just going to be a matter of, like there's going to be certain periods of your life where you have to sacrifice so much to get to that Fully like balanced, I, yeah. perfect life. You know yeah. what I mean? There was a portion where my mom couldn't be super mom because she had to deal with being a businesswoman. Exactly. And I don't know why, but I understood that because yep. I'm like, well, at but least. look at her now. I mm-hmm. got my toys, so I'm good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're like, like you know, I got, got to do everything needed. I wanted. Yeah. I want to do volleyball. I want to do all the things. Yeah, 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 absolutely. But there is a sacrifice that comes with it. Oh, uh, 100%. Yeah, so much like our parents sacrificed to come here. Because when I went back home, I was like, I'm sorry, y'all left this for what? Yep. That's okay. what I'm saying. And also people uh, here in Ethiopia, like that's the non habesha I was like, oh my God, you're from Ethiopia. How was it? I'm just like, it was lit, bro. Like, let me tell you about my life in Ethiopia. Like, people I don't always, understand that. I always tell my non Habasha fr- yeah. non Habasha friends that like, if you see a Habasha or Ethiopian person or Eritrean yeah. person or really India or anyone yeah. here and living comfortably, they are living like Justin Bieber over there. Let's just be real, yeah. right? So let's Drivers, not get it twisted. Freaking, let's not get it twisted. I've never thought about like work in Ethiopia. You know what I mean? You're just like. Here, I feel like every, it's like a very, like, hustle, hustle culture. Like, bro, people, every cafe I go to is always packed in Ethiopia. I don't get it. Like, yeah. it's midday. I'm like, yeah. you guys not have work. <laughs> like, but no, life over there is is, is is phenomenal. But, yeah, I think sacrifice is, is a huge part. Like, mm-hmm. I would say, like, 10% of, like, what a lot of people show, like, successful entrepreneurs or whatever it is, is, like, you only want that 10%, but the 90% of the time, like, you would not want to live the life I live. Like, that's just the truth. Yeah. So it's like you have to really pick and choose. Like, I mean, it's it's insane. Like sometimes like, even I'm just like, holy shit, is this shit worth like my hairline's receding on my gray <laughs> hair? I'm like, this is crazy. You know what I mean? So hairline is crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But I think part I think it's you have to actually love what you're doing. Hundred percent. Because that's the only way that it, I say that a million that's the only way it makes sense. You can't yeah. be in it for the money or whatever. It because the yeah you might like it for a little bit yeah. and I've seen it with um some of uh my sales guys yeah. where I could tell who's in it for the money or who really is in Genuinely it just to cares. be number one yeah. in their territory like 100%. that's all they they want to dominate that entire and make history basically and that's 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 literally exactly what you said. So I brand myself or want to be the number one real estate agent in the DMV. Yeah. Like that's my entire thing. And you're so young. It's kind of insane. When I was like Gen Z real estate, I was like, I'm sorry, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What does that even mean? Yeah. And then literally when I consulted, uh, Maram is one who reached out, but another yeah. one of my producers as well, Maram was like, oh my God, I know him. I'm like, oh, oh, cool. yeah, let's yeah. get him on. Like, yeah, why yeah. not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's really bummed she couldn't that's be here, but you'll meet no, her I'll meet her at some point, yeah. Yeah. 
Um, okay, last thing yeah. before we wrap up. Um, first of all, do you have anything else that you want to share? Is there anything that we did not touch that you want to like kind of um, share with with uh, my audience at all? Um, honestly, it's just like, I don't know, just very cliche, but it's uh, more of just like, what, like especially because this is first gen, right? This is who we're really talking to directly. Yeah. I think you guys have so much more of an upper hand than you think you do like the work mm -hmm. ethic that we come from like we might think that we're behind but we're not we're like so ahead and there's so much like that we've learned from our parents from back home from our cultures that can really help you succeed and like there's just no limit like i feel like we're so limited because like we don't see a lot of our own people in the positions that we're like oh like this is so dope but, like oh that's too far out like we're not going to be able to do that or whatever it is so um i think you know same back to that one video that you saw. It's like if you're determined and committed, like I genuinely think you can do anything. Like I don't care what it is. Starting the biggest podcast in the DMV in the US, doing, you know, being the best travel nurse. Like it doesn't matter what it is. Like I genuinely think you can do it as long as you guys are committed, dedicated. Beautiful. And that was the, my last point is if there's one thing you could share to first days, what would it be? And that was, that was, um, yeah, it was beautiful. Awesome. God, you're such, you made my job easy today. That's, that's um, and job. I learned so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I do. Yeah. Baby. <laughs> um, I will also, guys, tag him below in the description. Please make sure you follow him. Yeah. He has really great context specifically. I'll try to link the actual video that was like, I need to get him on this. It was, it was as if you knew I was going to be reaching out. That's how. And it was. You know, I made the video like, for you, right? Of course you did. I well, literally had you, you on top of my head. I'm like, yeah, this is what's going to happen. Thanks. Yeah. Um, so I'll include that one because it's just, it's just really inspiring because you're actually on the soil of our home country and yeah. it was just it was just really beautiful and even remind me of why i'm doing this um so i heard i hope you guys heard everything this guy said you're very intelligent um congrats on everything you've achieved and I even more it. in the future thank you so much for having me this was like so amazing and i love what you're doing like especially targeting directly first gens yeah like it, it's gonna impact so many people like thank you oh thank you i really appreciate that um, that is it for this episode, guys. As always, comment or comment down below, subscribe, like, do all the things, and then follow Firsties, Firsties POD for short clips behind the scenes, all those things. And that is it. We'll see you in our next video. Take care, guys. Awesome. That was fire. That was